The Atlas E, F, also designated SB-1A was an American expendable launch system and sounding rocket built using parts of decommissioned SM-65 Atlas missiles. It was a member of the Atlas family of rockets. The first stage was built using parts taken from decommissioned Atlas E and Atlas F missiles, with various solid propellant upper stages used, depending on the requirements of the payload. The Atlas E, F was also used without an upper stage for a series of re-entry vehicle tests. On a single launch, an Room 81 Agena liquid propellant upper stage was used. Variants Atlas E, F 30 Atlas E, F rockets were launched without upper stages for ABRES and BMRS re-entry vehicle tests between 1965 and 1974. Three of these launches failed. Five ABRES launches were also conducted whilst the missiles were still operational, however these did not use the Atlas E, F configuration. Atlas E, F Agena An Room 81 Agena upper stage was used on a former Atlas F, to launch the SEASAT-1 satellite on 27 June 1978. This was the final flight of the Atlas Agena. Previous Atlas Agena launches had used Atlas D or Atlas SLV-3 rockets as first stages. The final Atlas, Agena was used on Atlas E, F. Atlas E, F Altair An Atlas E, F with an Altair 3A upper stage was used to launch three Staxat spacecraft on of April 1990. The rocket was capable of placing 210 kg 460 pounds of payload into low Earth orbit. Atlas E, F burner A burner 2 upper stage was used on an Atlas E, F to launch the Radsat and Radcat satellites on 2 October 1972. The rocket had a payload capacity of 950 kg 2,090 pounds to low Earth orbit. <laughs> Atlas E, F MSD Atlas E, F rockets with MSD upper stages were used for four launches, with NOS naval reconnaissance satellites between 1976 and 1980. The fourth of these launches failed when one of the booster unit engines shut down early. This configuration had a maximum payload capacity of 800 kg 1, pounds to LEO. Atlas E, FOIS The OIS upper stage was used for two Atlas E, F launches in 1979 and 1985, with the Solwind and Geosat spacecraft respectively. The rocket could place 870 kg pounds into low Earth orbit. Atlas E, FOV-1 The Atlas E, F was used between 1968 and 1971 to launch four groups of OV-1 satellites, using OV-1 upper stages. Each payload had its own upper stage. Three of the launches carried two OV-1 satellites, and one carried three. Two of the launches also carried secondary payloads. In this configuration, the rocket could place 363 kg 800 pounds into LEO. Topic: <laughs> Atlas E FPTS. The PTS was used to launch the NTS-1 satellite on the 14th of July 1974. 
The upper stage gave the vehicle a payload capacity of 295 kg pounds to a medium Earth transfer orbit. <laughs> Atlas E, FSGS The SGS upper stage, which consisted of two series burning solid rocket motors, was used on 12 Atlas E, F launches, with early GPS satellites. The first eight used the SGS-1, which could place 455 kg pounds of payload into a medium Earth transfer orbit, whereas the last four used the more powerful SGS-2. The eighth launch failed. Topic. Atlas E, F star The star was used to propel most of the other upper stages used on the Atlas E, F, however it was also used in its own right on several launches. A Star 17A was used in the launch of the Room 20 spacecraft on 12 April 1975, giving the rocket a LEO payload of 725 kg pounds, while the Star 37 SISS was used to launch 19 DMSP, NOAA and TROS weather satellites between 1978 and 1995. With the Star 37 upper stage, the rocket could place 1,100 kg 2, into a Sun-synchronous orbit. The Room 20 launch failed due to damage to the first stage, caused by the explosion of residual fuel in the flame trench during launch. Another launch failed due to stage separation occurring at the correct time despite the first stage burn being extended by 50 seconds to resolve an underperformance issue, the end result of which was the upper stage separating and igniting whilst the first stage was still firing. <laughs> Atlas E, F Trident The Atlas E, F was used with a Trident upper stage, between 1967 and 1971, for suborbital tests of re-entry vehicles. Nineteen were launched, of which two failed. 